Using ANOVA to compare multiple sets of data with StatPlus on Excel for Mac. Here is some data from an investigation where the independent variable was the daily volume of water and the dependent variable height of radish. Scientific name is here so we know where. After 35 days, you can see changing volume and height of plants. Looking at this, our first glance suggests there's a good trend. So we can graph this. We select these here, hold command, averages, chart, XY scatter, done. Looks like a good trend, but this graph needs some work. First we get rid of this one line, we don't need a key. This graph needs a bit of work. Reset the X axis, and then add a line of best fit, shape this to be as good as we can get it, and align our graph. We're starting to look a bit better now. Looks like a good trend. The line of best fit is a very good fit to our data. Now we can add our error bars. While the line of best fit is a very good fit, there is a large overlapping error in the standard deviations, which means I can't be sure there is a clear trend here, which is why we will now perform an analysis of variance. But first, we should really clean up and complete this graph. And here we go, a final and completed graph. I'm still uncertain if there's a clear trend, so I'll perform an analysis of variance. To perform an analysis of variance, we take our independent variable and our raw data. We do not want our averages, we do not want our standard deviation. Copy this, open a new sheet, and paste our values. This is the information we'll use to perform our analysis of variance. We should have these tabs from when we installed STAT+, Plus, Analysis of Variance, and the first option, a one-way ANOVA without any further tests afterwards. Here we go. We now have to tell it which sets of data are we going to be using. We want all four of these columns to so simply choose each column and add them. It now knows to take all four sets of data. Labels are in the first row, yes. And preferences. I don't want a new workbook, so we'll put it in a new sheet. And we're ready to go. We now hit OK, and we'll get a large and complicated table to then interpret. Here we go, our analysis of variance table. We now need to interpret this. To interpret an ANOVA table, we look at two things the p-value and the ratio of f to f critical. For there to be a difference between our levels of independent variable, p must be larger than 0.5, which is sometimes written as 5%, and the f value must be larger than f critical. If we have both of these conditions satisfied, there is a significant difference. Looking at our ANOVA table, a quick check do these means match those we've already calculated? Sample sizes are correct for our four levels. Now looking at this, our P is much smaller than 0.05 because this is 0.08%, which is 0.0008. F is much larger than F critical. So we can conclude that the volume of water added had a significant effect on the height of our radish plants after 35 days. This can be written like this, starting off saying that our daily volume of water added had a significant effect. Evidence, a one-way ANOVA, our p-value was 0087 round to 009. F was larger than F critical. Now your readers may need to see this, so always add your ANOVA table to an appendix. Here I've written, see Appendix A. Now here, all I've said is there is a trend. We need to then tell our readers what that trend is, which will be obvious on your graph. Increasing the volume of water from 25 to 40 milliliters per day. Increase the height of radish plants after 35 days. And we can add here, see graph 1, just to provide a little bit more visual evidence. 